Welcome back, everybody, to part 11, 1 1 of Everlasting Summer. Last time, we were attacked by a schizophrenic Shurik while we were with Eliza, who was. She was not having an epic time, a very difficult time for her. But yeah, and then we had a nightmare about being in that bomb shelter again, and it was, uh, it scared me. I ain't gonna lie. So, episode 11, let's get started. Here we are, the Electro Nick. On my way to the wash stands, I met Electro Nick. He started to wave his hand and ran up to me. Ohio Gazimas, thank you for finding Shirk. Without him, I don't even... It's nothing. I was a bit embarrassed. No, really. Don't be so shy. The country must be proud of its heroes. And what about Shirk? How did he look this morning? Is he alright? After yesterday's craziness, I thought such a question was completely valid. Yes. Absolutely. The only thing is that he can't remember anything. Can't he? I wasn't surprised at all. He says that he went to the abandoned camp yesterday and then woke up in his bed in the morning. I mean, he remembers nothing between those two events. I see. He doesn't remember viciously attacking us. Alright then. You missed breakfast, right? Come. To our club. We'll feed you. I have something special. I'm, I really hope it's not a cock meat sandwich. Electronic smiled in a conspirational, consp, oh, conspiratorial, oh man, I've never seen that word. In a conspiratorial way. Oh wait, like conspiracy, conspiratorial way. I guess that me. I've just never seen that that word in that way. Oh, whatever. Thanks. I'll come. Probably. I had to wash myself first anyway. We'll be waiting. He waved at me and left to carry out his own business. There was nobody near the wash stands. The water turned out surprisingly warm today. It's been warmed up already, I guess. Having my face washed, I realized that it wouldn't be easy to wash the rest of my body here. Maybe I should go to the showers, but since there's nobody here, I turned the tap in such a way so water streamed parallel to the ground and started to take off my clothes. And what if somebody sees me? Well, I'll rinse and dry myself quickly and put on my clothes. The water, which seemed warm on my hands and face, felt bone-chillingly cold on my body. The whole washing process took no longer than 10 seconds, and I started to wipe myself quickly afterwards. But I didn't manage to finish. Anyway, there were voices coming in from the direction of the footpath. The only solution came to me in a split second. I grabbed my clothes and dashed into the bushes. A moment later, Eliza and Oliana appeared near the washstands. You could have done it by yourself. Why did you bring me here? It's a big deal for you. Fine. Let me... I peered at them and noticed that they were both covered in red paint. What a surprise. How loud the music is. I wonder how they manage that. Eliza opened the valve and started to rub Oliana's back. I hit the scroll wheel on accident. I apologize. Oh, wow. Take off your bra. What if somebody sees us? What? Is there anything to see? She grinned. Okay, just be quick. Jack, be nimble. Jack, be quick. Jack, you must suck me. It was true that there wasn't much to look at, but even so, I stared at the girls narrowly. It was a pity that they were standing with their backs to me. A minute later, Eliza managed to wash off all the paint. I'm done. Thanks! You're welcome. Eliza replied lazily. Listen, let me try on yours! She pointed at Eliza's bra. It won't fit you for sure. Well, I'd like to try anyway! 
but out here... There's nobody here, right? Oyan looked my way and smiled archly. I was absolutely sure she couldn't see me in these bushes, but... Enough with this nonsense. Oyan wasn't listening to her anymore and grabbed Eliza's bra with a dexterous move instead. Now, I have to confess, I had something to look at. I wish my screen wasn't black and it was, like, you know, the girls, but whatever. I watched the two girls chase one another around the washstands with a batted breath. Eliza covered her breast with her hands so I could barely see anything at all. I leaned forward and stumbled over a stone, falling out of the bushes. Eliza and Oliana stood frozen, staring at me. I tried to cover my nudity with my guilty face. The... Tableau lasted for a few seconds, then Eliza took her shirt and somehow put it on in an instant. You... you... Her face grew from red to purple. It looked like she would explode in a nuclear blast any second. The only thing I, want, I wanted was to disintegrate into atoms as to get as far from the epicenter as possible. He was sitting there the whole time! So she noticed me then. You... You... And I... Well, I... Accidentally... If you know what I mean... Eliza rushed at me. Covering my butt with one hand and holding my clothes with the other, I ran in the woods. It seemed the best solution to me at the time, as showing up naked in the middle of the camp accompanied by two screaming girls wasn't a good idea. I ran without looking back, and stopped a few minutes later to catch my breath. It seemed that there was no pursuit, so I managed to save myself. But at the cost of lacerated, scratched, and bleeding feet as I had no time to put on my boots, I sat on a tree stump and sighed. Some time later, having dressed already, I left the forest. I needed to decide what to do next. My feet are hurting, so I should go straight to the infirmary. But on the other hand, my stomach isn't going to wait either. Maybe I should accept Electronic's invitation. Or head to the canteen in, in the hope of finding something left to eat there. Um, okay. Infirmary, kitchen dining hall, or the clubhouse. Anything else? No. Bus stop? No. Um... So Shirk tried to kill us and Eliza last time, so that was a bit unepic. Uh, our feet are bloody, but we also are pretty darn hungry. Let's let's go kitchen dining hall. Why not? I always took good care of my health, and even better care at the moments when I couldn't bear it anymore. And now I was able to walk away and my feet weren't hurting as much. So my feet will heal up eventually, while hunger drives the wolf from the wood. Surely the pioneers didn't finish up everything. At least a couple of susuage, eggs, or in the worst case, a few pieces of bread should be left. It was so deserted and quiet around the canteen that I even hesitated for a second. Isn't it here where every pioneer seeks his happiness three times a day, and some even more often? Isn't it an oasis of this heated summer desert? Isn't it a secret chemical lab studying how types of meals unknown to science affect immature teenage bodies? Now this building looked more like a bastion abandoned by its defenders, a kind of La Rochelle left by the Huguenots. Just get in and the ghost of warriors who accepted a heroic death will surround you. The canteen looked the way it always did though. It was just completely empty. Except for Miku, who was cleaning a table. Seeing that, I quickly turned around and tried to sneakily escape, but didn't manage to make it. A little Wawa action. You always gotta take a sip before the Miku action. She talks very fast. <clears throat> Hi, Mark Happy. Did you come here to eat? You missed breakfast, didn't you? I mean, I didn't see you. You could have been there, but I didn't see you. It's good that you came anyway. Um, hi. Well, I... Yes, I just came. Wondering if there's anything left, maybe. There's nothing left. You need to wait for lunch. You won't help me, by the way. I'm cleaning up here. What for? 
What do you mean? She puffed up her lips and seemed offended. Somebody has to clean up. We do it in turns. You'll have your turn as well. Thanks, but no. Okay, got it. I was going to leave, but Miku still couldn't stop. So, will you help me? Um... Dude, I'm, I'm not going to stand for Miku bullying. Like, we have to help her. I don't know why I agreed. It happens often that you make a decision first and then wonder for quite a while why you did what you said. You think again and again, and still can't figure out why on earth you did that. That's how I felt wiping the tables one after another. You know, <laughs> you know, I came up with a new song. Want me to sing it? Not eager at all. Hmm, no? She started to think. It would be hard to sing and clean up at the same time. I'll sing it later then. Miku gave me a disarming smile. Yes, of course. It's so cool how you saved Jerk yesterday. The entire camp has been talking only about it since this early morning. I feel just like a hero. It was nothing much. Really. No, really. I'm serious. I would never dare go into the woods at night into the old camp. You know, the rumors about it. About a camp leader who shot herself before they said she hanged herself. And it's so scary in general. Yep, it probably is. I tried to isolate, isolate myself from external stimuli and concentrate on the cleaning. It helped me to finish sooner than I expected. And now it's done. Thanks. There was quite a bit of time until lunch, so I decided to go for a walk. I picked a random direction, which could be explained by the single word forward. In the end, I found myself at the square. This wasn't a surprise as the monument of Genda appeared to be the central hub of this camp in a kind of kilometer zero. I sat on the bench and started to think. Four days have passed and I haven't even gotten an inch closer to working out how I got here. It's true that quite a few strange things happen during this time, but almost every one of them can be explained logically after critically thinking. I remember reading uh, on, a, on the Steam page, someone said this game was really short, but here we are on episode 11, still going strong. Like, I don't know, maybe, maybe like that guy plays like 10 day dating sims or something, I don't know. Either way, let's continue. Hope you're having a good time. I am. Every single one of them could have happened in a normal life. Normal life. This term lost its original meaning to me here. Reactions to the environment, the actions and words of other people, or my own words. Indeed, none of this here is normal. In the past four days, my world has taken a series of painful punches to the stomach and uppercut, which, which led it to being if not knocked out, then seriously knocked down. Sometimes I don't understand why I act one way or the other, or say some things. Actually, I do understand, but it's not straight away. Such afterthoughts, however, don't help me to act differently, more sanely, and appropriate to the situation at all. Moments of truth happen to me are becoming more and more rare. If my only wish during the first day was getting out of here, then now my main concerns are where to find food, how to avoid lineup in the morning, and what to say to Olga Dmitrinov if Eliza complains about me. And those things are truly important to me. And day after day, daily fuss like this overshadows the thought in my head about how world, about how world around me, together with this camp and these girls, are completely abnormal. But I can't do anything about myself, because I just forget. In the same way we breathe without thinking about it, I am joining in the everyday life of the local inhabitants more and more without realizing it. I'm steadily becoming an average pioneer. No. I feel like with that, that huge monologue, like that just makes my thoughts seem a little uh, smaller in the grand scheme of things, because I just think like, poo, shid, fard, come, and then the protagonist here is like talking about the intricacies of life and like afterthoughts and I, I don't know maybe my maybe my mind is just so uh engulfed with tomboys that I can only think about that who knows this is wrong 
I shouted loud and slapped my face a few times. Oh, God. All of a sudden, the bell sound, calling the pioneers for the lunch, came from the loudspeakers. Finally, I ran skipping along to the canteen, leaving my inspiring thoughts back at the square where they could sound interesting to Genda alone, and only if he was alive. Ah, the day has just started, and I've gone through so many things already, but I did it and now have legitimate grounds to fill myself up. I wish someone would fill me up. Today I wasn't the last one, so I could choose a free table. Lunch indeed. Lunch included pea soup and mashed potatoes with fish. It was a major disappointment to me, as I don't eat fish in any form and hence will get fewer calories than usually. Soon Slavia and Lena came to my table. I haven't done Slavia's voice in a very long time. A uh, can we? She smiled nicely. Uh, yeah, sure. I stood up and pulled out a chair for her. Please. I was in an excellent mood at the moment. Enjoy your meal. Saying that, Lena began staring at me and continued for some time, but then, after realizing how odd she looked, switched to her plate. You too. Do you have any plans for today as a more copy? Nope. I gave her an honest answer, as I indeed had no plans. Except for searching for answers, but that was more like a global goal. Do you want to take a boat ride to the island with us? The island? Well, I think I've seen it from the pier. For what? Olga Dmitrinov asked us to gather some strawberries. There are a lot of strawberries there. And they were so delicious, much like the milkman, his milka delicious. I could imagine the taste without even eating it, just by looking at Slavia's face. Strawberries. And what are those for? I don't know, but it's indeed a great idea. Well, indeed it is. Moreover, I haven't been to the island yet. Yeah, sure. It's pretty epic, going on a little boat trip to an island. Within minutes, we were already standing at the pier. Well, here is the boat. Hang on, I'll go in to fetch the paddles now. I was left face to face with Lena. Do you like strawberries? Well, not really. But they're tasty. What does that mean? You don't like strawberries, but they're tasty. Hmm, interesting. Lena smiled. I see. I didn't know what to say next, how to continue the conversation. If Slavi didn't come back, we could probably sit here till the evening without saying a word. Here you go. She handed me a pair of hefty paddles. Yeah, thanks. We got into the boat. I untied it, pushed off the shore, and tried to start paddling. And where exactly are we heading to? Right to there. She pointed her fingers at the island. That island is named the closest one. I wonder what captain gave it such an original name. Well, the island is indeed close to the shore. Aye aye, captain. If only I'd known what was waiting for me ahead. I wasn't an experienced oarsman. I rode a boat just once or twice in my entire life. It was less than half a mile to the island, but we were making our way in zigzags thanks to my skills. By approximately the middle of my trip, of the trip, my arms hurt so badly that I had to drop the paddles to get some rest. Well, aren't there any strawberries anywhere else? I mean, in more accessible places? But the tastiest ones are grow here. Slavia gave me a puzzled look. Is it hard for you to row alone? Lena, unlike Slavia, understood everything straight away. Oh. It's nothing. Anyway, I couldn't let a fragile girl help me. The rest of the way I spent concentrating on staying alive while trying to get the, to the island. Slavia and Lena discussed something, but I wasn't listening. That was too much for me. At last we arrived. 
Completely exhausted, I got out, got out on the shore and looked at the boathouse. It seemed so far away that I felt like a first person on the moon watching the earth rise. Here you go. Slavia handed me a basket. It was a small island, barely a hundred meters long, and it looked more like a birch grove with even rows of trees covering its entire surface. A calm green sea spread beneath our feet with wind causing lonely waves on its surface from time to time. This island looked like a lost paradise. It's no wonder that the most delicious strawberries grow just here. <clears throat> We've just got to split up. That will do the job faster. Yeah, sure. But there are only two baskets, said Lena humbly. Oh, you're right. Am I a bad? So how are we going to split up then? I'm gonna go with Slavia. We've been getting close to Lena, but like I, like Slavia got some nice milkers and she pretty cute. I didn't want to walk here alone and hope that Slavia would join me, but I couldn't bring myself to ask. Well, it's obvious. One basket for me, one for you two. Ah uh, no, let me go with you. Slavia smiled. Okay. I was a bit surprised, but I was also glad that it turned out like this. Lena seemed to take no offense at all. The reaping has commenced. The strawberries were delicious here indeed. I could probably eat them all if I didn't stop myself in time. Despite being wild grown, the berries were close to the gardens, garden ones in size and had a rich red color. So it was clear that our visit here wasn't in vain. Slavia was walking right beside me as we had only one basket. I felt like a mushroom picker, looking under every shrub and searching through the grass carefully. Uh, mushroom picker was actually my nickname in high school, so that's pretty epic. Uh, pay attention, an entire bunch of strawberries have been left behind. Ah, uh, yeah, I'm sorry. It's a fine. You must enjoy being here, don't you? You like nature and all. Of course I do, Slavia smiled. It reminds me of my home. We have similar beautiful birches there. She gazed dreamily somewhere into the distance. Look, I've always wanted to ask, what do you like in general? You look busy 24 seven and it seems like you have no time to rest at all. Uh, she started to think. I don't know really. Doing a variety of activities is enjoyable before me. Well, that's understandable, but still. I like knitting and sewing. Things are like that. Slavia took a handkerchief, handkerchief out of her pocket. There were red, yellow, and green flowers embroidered on it. They were entangled with each other in a complicated way, creating sophisticated geometric forms. Such a typical Russian handmade handkerchief. Glimpsing it, instantly imagined Slavia dressed in an ancient sarfan sitting on a bench besides a ramshackle house with a crowd of playing children running around. It's quite cute. A uh, thanks. Let me give it to you as a gift. Such a proposal embarrassed me. You shouldn't. No, I take it. Dude, if some of Slavia's sweat is on that handkerchief, like, I'm taking that. Like, instantly. Instantly. I looked at the handkerchief once again and put it into my pocket. Thank you. That's pretty epic. Water time. There were so many strawberries here that after a mere half an hour, we had the basket filled up to the brim. It seems we're done. I guess. We've got a lot, so it should be surely enough. When we got back to the boat, Lena wasn't there yet. She <laughs> she didn't need more time to fill the basket by herself. Yeah, I guess so. I looked at the river. Sun sparkles happily dancing across the water surface were the only thing that distinguished it from a mirror. That's how calm the river seemed. What are you thinking about? Nothing really. And you? A me? 
What will happen once vacation is over? We'll have to leave this camp and go back to our homes. Will I ever see anyone I met here again? Will I ever see you again? She looked at me with her eyes so full of sorrow that I couldn't think of what to say. Lena came, out of nowhere, breaking the silence. Oh, you're done already? Here. She showed us a basket full of strawberries. A great. Now we can go back. And I still had Slavia's face and those words of hers on my mind. Sadness and sorrow weren't the kinds of emotions typical of her. Could she be hiding them all that time under a mask of cheerfulness? I had no answer to this question, and I knew I couldn't find one either way. Maybe later. The way back took less time as I tried to concentrate on rowing and ignoring everything else. My only wish was to get back alive, as the first trip hadn't gone without consequence, and now my hands started to hurt after only a few sweeps of the oar. Having tied up the boat, I fell to the ground with no energy left. Slavia and Lena leaned over me. You could have said something if it was so hard for you. Yes. Never mind, it's fine. I'll just lie here for a bit. Everything will be alright. I have something in my eye. Oh no. Oh man. Gosh darn specks of dust coming in my cornea like that. Not epic. Ahem. <clears throat> Excuse me, fellas. Okay, then the, then get those baskets to Olga Dmitrina, please. We have something else to do. Yeah, sure. I was ready to agree with anything at that moment just so I wouldn't have to get up. Slavia put the baskets full of strawberries next to me and headed to the square, happily chatting with Lena about something. The hardest part is done anyway. That's what I thought before I got up and took the baskets. After the rowing, they felt like cement bags, even while weighing, weighing barely more than a few kilograms each. So the trip to the camp leader's cabin took much longer than usual. I had to stop every 50 meters to have a rest. Once I finally made it, I put the baskets on the ground and sat on the deck chair with difficulty. Olga Mitrinov. Olga Mitrinov, I've got presents for you. There was no answer. I barely managed to get up and enter the cabin. There was nobody there. If you don't need them, it's up to you. I lay down on the deck chair and fell asleep. I had a weird dream about a strawberry race. I was rowing a boat with my last ounces of strength, trying to escape huge berries that were chasing me. My hands were falling behind me, and I could barely see anything because of the sweat covering my face. Blood was hammering in my temples, but the strawberries were getting closer. They were burying their teeth at me. But wait, strawberries with teeth? Markapi! Markapi! Ah, the milk goddess. The goddess of milk. I woke up. Olga Dmitrinov was standing beside me, shaking my shoulder. I see you got a rich harvest, didn't you? Yes, I tried my best, thanks to the girls' help. It's always best to give credit where credit is due, so we're going to give the girls credit, you know? We don't want to be too cocky, but I do love cocky. Okay, but that's not all. Seriously, I was just anticipating the lovely rest I was about to have. Do you even know what these strawberries are for? Not a clue. What an honest confession. We'll make a cake out of them. I see. Well, that makes sense. To honor the miraculous rescue of Shurik. And it's all thanks to you. It was clear that getting the strawberries wasn't the last thing left to do. And why? Please tell me, if I am such a hero, why do I have to organize a celebration in my name all by myself? Well, I guess... So, I have an important task for you. We are missing yeast, flour, and sugar, and need it all in the canteen before dinner. And those who will make the cake can't deal with it on their own somehow? I asked pitifully. Of course they can't. All of them are busy, and you're the only one in the whole camp who does nothing. While her words were partially true, that doesn't make it 
any easier for me now. Moreover, those words were like a bullet to my head. So, write it down. You'll get yeast in the infirmary, flour in the library, and sugar in the clubhouse. Wait, wait the. I have no time, I'm in a hurry. Look at that milk goddess. Good luck. She smiled slyly and left. Of course, there are a lot of strange things in this camp, but yeast in the infirmary? Okay, I can deal with that, but flour in the library and sugar? No, it's way beyond my comprehension. I spat on the floor. I don't, I don't want to, and I will not believe this. Tell me just, tell me, just tell me you're pulling my leg. I would not be surprised if a crowd of fat green trolls would appear right here now beside me, with every one of them feeling obligated to laugh at me. So maybe to hell with this cake. I weighed my options for some time. No, if such a major plan of Olga Dmitrinov's fell through, I'd be in for a great world of hurt. And it would complicate both my life in the camp and my search for answers, which I've stopped for quite a while. It seems I had no choice. You know, that's probably a good place to call it. Uh, save that game. Boom. That's going to be a wrap for episode 11 here, fellas. So, yeah. This, this is proving to be a very long walkthrough. I'm, I'm hoping we finish before episode 20. I have been doing like 30 to one hour episodes occasionally. So we'll see, we'll see where we get. Anyway, thank you for watching the video. Thank you for already liking the video. That was pretty epic of you. If you want to leave a comment, that'd be pretty epic. Uh, please subscribe if you had not already. And as always, help me find a girlfriend. And bye bye